In this video, I'm going to go through two things. One, how to label a transverse wave with crest, trough, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and the resting position. The other thing I'm going to do, number two, is to show you how to graph a transverse wave. So let's get started with the labeling first. So I'm going to draw the two axes for these waves. And you'll use waves in chemistry, and you'll use waves in physics, and sometimes in mathematics, you will also draw uh, sine or cosine waves too. So we're going to draw these two axes. For science, um, this is going to be called the displacement. This direction is going to be called distance. Next thing I'm going to do is just give it a shot and draw a wave. So I'm going to go up, back down, hit that point again and try to make it look the same and back up. And let's say that that took one second, you know, to happen, okay? That's gonna help us with frequency, so one second. So let's label all the components. The top is the crest. You actually have, we have two crests here, there and there. Down at the bottom is called the trough. So here and here are called trough. Amplitude is actually from here to here, you know, and really amplitude it can go downwards too, okay? So that's amplitude. And then um, the next thing would be wavelength. There's a couple ways to do wavelength. You can do crest to crest, here to here is wavelength. Don't get confused, a wavelength is given the symbol lambda. So you might see that some people will label trough to trough as wavelength, but to be honest with you, there's one more thing that's important. This line is called the resting position, and you can do, you know, kind of what I call resting point to resting point. So for example, we started here and the wave ended there. That is also wavelength. From here to here is also wavelength, okay? Not a very good lambda there, but there we go. The last thing would be frequency. So frequency is the fact that I had one, and then I had this wave go up and back down to a, you know, the resting point came again here, so it started, it went up and down, and then it landed there. So I have a frequency of two. So frequency is just how many cycles um, happen per second. So I would say I had, you know, a frequency of two in this one second of time. All right, we're going to move on to the next part of the video, which is how to graph these waves. So the first thing you're going to want to do is have your graph paper and put a title on it. I'm just going to title mine Wave Graph. You'd probably put a better title on it if you were doing physics or chemistry or uh, mathematics, but we'll just call it Wave Graph. Then the next thing is to draw your axes here. Use a ruler, get a nice straight line. All right, and then we'll find that middle point, which is about here. And that's going to be called our resting position for a wave graph, okay? And then displacement, or really this is going to be amplitude, but let me just call it displacement. That's kind of a nice catch-all label that works for most subjects. And then down here, the most common label for physics and chemistry is going to be distance. And then I'm just going to say that this happens all in one second, okay? I'm just going to pick some arbitrary numbers. I'm going to make my amplitude uh, 7, I'm going to make the wavelength uh, 8, nice even number, that'll help us graph it easier, and then let's just make it uh, a frequency of 3. That means I'm going to have 3 cycles of this wave in one second, okay? So I'm going to switch colors, I'll try to do a color for each each one of these. So wavelength, I'm going to start with wavelength, I'm going to do like a kind of a pinky color here. So you're going to end up needing a wavelength of 8. So I'm going to start at 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that is going to be where my wave is going to crest, go through the resting point, down to the trough, and back to this resting point. Halfway through, it's going to cross this resting position line. And then those are kind of the key points for wavelength. Next thing we're going to need to do is amplitude. Amplitude I'll do in green. That's going to be how far this wave goes up and down on this graph. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is going to be the height. And then same for going down. I'm just going to put negative numbers just to symbolize that I'm going in the downward direction there. 
halfway between the, the zero and the four is where our crest is gonna be up at seven. So I'm gonna go to two and then up to seven. Same thing here, halfway between four and eight, you're gonna go down to seven. So six is the halfway point between four and eight and go down. And then what we wanna do is, you know, I'm gonna do orange for frequency. We wanna make this be one uh, cycle. Okay, sometimes it's called a, a period two, but we'll just call it a cycle, make it easy. So there's one, okay? So that would be a frequency of one in this one second, but it's a frequency of three. So what I need to do is I need to graph this uh, two more times. So I'm gonna go out eight more. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is here. That's gonna be uh, our next wave. Halfway will be right there. And then I'm gonna switch colors. Amplitude is again the height of the crest and the trough. So halfway between here is gonna be on you know, nine and 10 and then up to seven. Same thing, halfway between here is gonna be your 14 and then down to seven. And then to show that I did another cycle, I'm gonna have the wave go crest through the resting point, back down to the trough and up to the uh, resting point again. Try to kind of smooth this out a little bit. That one was a little sharp. All right, one more time, because again, that's a frequency of two. So I needed a frequency of three, same thing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then mark your halfway points. Those again are where your resting points will be for your wavelength. You're gonna have a crest and a trough at those points. And then draw again are your nice, smooth, hopefully smooth wave. Trying to make it a little bit more smoother than the last time. There we go. So there's a little mistake there, but that's still fine, okay? Now, how does this relate to chemistry? So the big thing is wavelength. So I kind of drew like a pretty, you know, simple electromagnetic spectrum here. Uh, in chemistry, we really study visible light, especially if you're doing flame tests or emission spectrums. So the big thing to know is that when you're at 700 nanometers approximately, you have red visible light. That has longer wavelengths than the purple visible light or violet is really what you should call it, violet. And those are at about 400 nanometers approximately. And those violet colors are much shorter wavelength. The next up is ultraviolet and then X-rays and gamma. And on the other side, kind of makes sense, infa, which means less than red, is the uh, type of electromagnetic radiation that's uh, lower than red. So again, ultraviolet is a higher energy, shorter wavelength than violet. And infa, less than red, is a longer, lower energy wavelength than red. So it kind of helps you kind of know who's on each side of the spectrum. And what you'll do is you'll take this in chemistry and you'll relate it to, you know, a wavelength graph, okay? So again, hopefully in this video, you were able to label these uh, topics on a wave and you're able to graph a wave. Good luck.